Hey guys, it's Vera from Real Visuals and in today's video I'm going to be freezing some things in ice and taking photos of them. Since I'm stuck at home now, I've just been thinking of doing little photography projects to keep myself busy and one thing that I've always wanted to do is ice photography. Photography is something that I've always wanted to do and has never got the time to because of other projects and now I finally have the time to do it so I've collected all the things that I'm gonna need and I'm gonna take you guys on a little tutorial of how I'm going to do it. So the first thing we're going to need is some sort of a container to put our objects in so we can freeze them. I have a selection of some larger trays and some smaller ones. These are actually like some rubbery cupcake molds that I think are going to look quite cool because they have these ridges. So the next thing you're obviously going to need is something to put in the ice. So here I have like a large selection of plants that I collected in the garden and there's some dry plants as well that I found around the house. So I think this is going to just compose really well in the ice. So you can actually freeze anything you like, like plastic objects or vegetables or anything that you can find around your house. But I just chose plants because I do have quite a large garden outside and I just really like nature. So we're also going to need a pair of scissors to cut our plants some thread to tie things together so they don't float about and I also have cling film to just wrap everything at the end so that it doesn't float up and I also actually have pre-made some ice cubes because I think it's going to make it easier to weigh the plants down with the ice cubes and then pour water into it just to fill in the gaps and the last thing that you're going to need is water which I cannot fit in the frame. So let's start putting things together. I'm going to start with the large container because I am the most curious about this one so I want to have like a nice selection of plants in here and I think for this one I'm going to use these larger pieces just so we have like a nice background at the bottom. So I think this is like a really nice simple thing that you can just do at home because you don't really need that much equipment. You literally just need water, some kind of container and some things to put inside. <laughs> So I'm just going to be building like a little image that I think would look quite nice and nice. And the nice thing about this is that it's like a, it's gonna give us like a 3D sculpture inside. And you can get really creative with this. You can mix and match things together. You can like create little situations that you can then freeze and ice. You can even use this as a form of a portrait because portraits don't really have to include people. You can actually have things in an image that represents you, that you think are important to you or to someone else and that can be a portrait. So for the large tray I have used quite a lot of items, I didn't want to make it too minimalistic because I want to have like a really rich composition. So now I'm just going to secure some of these branches with like pieces of uh, thread so that they do not float about and stay together. So now I'm going to start putting the ice cubes around it. So having pre-made ice cubes is just going to cut down on the freezing time a lot. So I'm just literally going to fill in as much with the ice cubes as possible. And I'm gonna try not to just weigh them down, but actually poke them underneath the plants so that they do have that 3D shape inside. So the more ice cubes you have, the more it's going to cut down on your freezing time. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is get some cling film and just start wrapping this around the corners. So I'm going to leave a little section at the top so I can pour the water in. Now I'm going to pour in the water. Hopefully I have enough, but if not, then I can go downstairs and get some more. All right, so I think we have enough water now. I left a little bit of space because it is going to expand as it freezes. And now I'm just going to finish putting foil over that little edge, just so I'm less likely to spill it. So now the large tray is ready to be frozen. So next I'm going to be using this little glass jar that I'm going to actually put just like a small plant in because I don't, I wanted this to be like really minimalistic. So I'm literally going to use this one little dry plant in there. I'm going to cut it at the stem and just place it inside. So here are all my containers ready to be frozen. As you can see, I've made quite a big mess. So I'm gonna clean it up, stick these in the freezer, and in a few hours, I'm going to check out on them and we can start taking photos. So 
is now the next day and all of my ice is now frozen. I'm not gonna bring it up just yet because I don't want it to defrost whilst I'm setting up. So for my set today, I'm going to be using this black velvet as a background and I'm going to hang it on this clothing rack right here. So as my light source today, I'm going to be using this Young Nuo 685 speed light and I'm going to place it inside of this Godox 80 by 80 soft box with a double infusion inside that is going to give us a nice soft light. Later on in the video, I'll also be showing you a simpler method of taking photos of the ice blocks that doesn't require a flash so that you can try it at home if you don't have one anyway. Camera wise, I'm going to be using the M50 today to take the photos because I do have a super macro lens that goes with it. I'm really curious what kind of photos I can get with it when I get really close up to the ice. All right, so I'm gonna set up, run downstairs, get my ice blocks and then start taking the photos. So first up, I'm gonna be using the M50 kit lens, which is the 15 to 45, just so that I can have like a detailed close up and then a wide angle as well. I'm just going to set all of my camera settings to adjust it for the flash. I will put them up on the screen and I'm also going to test the flash to see if it's working. And so let's start taking photos. So I'm just gonna try taking some horizontal shots as well as some vertical shots, just to see what works better with this shape. But I am leaning more towards the vertical shot. So you don't really need to use a flash, I'm just using one just because I got the softbox recently and I just really want to try it out with some product photography. So here are the wide angle shots, I'm now going to swap over to the super macro lens. For the super macro lens you have to get really close to your subject in order for it to focus. It also has this little light at the front that you can turn on and off and there are two different settings, there's like a weaker one and a stronger one which helps with the focusing of the camera. So with this lens, I actually have to be touching the ice in order for it to focus, but you can get some really cool close-ups with it. So I'm also going to twist the ice block so that the back is facing uh, towards the light, so that the light comes in through the back, and I'm just gonna see what kind of a different result that gives us, because this should be like mimic what you would achieve by taking a photo in front of a window. So here's a comparison between the two photos. You can see that the one where the light enters through the side is a lot darker and you just get like a different mood. Whereas in the one where the light comes in through the back, you get like light gradients. It's like brighter in some spots and like darker in others where there's like thicker ice. So you can like really experiment by just twisting the block and trying to take photos from different angles. So for the past five minutes, I've just been taking lots of close-ups with the super macro lens. And I actually prefer them more than the wide angles because I just feel like they're a bit more like surrealistic and you just get a lot more out of them. So I am now going to run downstairs and get some of the other ice pieces. So I am now going to photograph this piece of ice once I get it out of the little glass. And I'm just pretty much going to repeat the steps that I just did with the other block of ice. So I'm just going to skip through this and just show you guys the final results. And I will do the same with all the other blocks. And then we can move over to the other method of photographing them, which is just placing them by the window. flash at home you can actually place the ice block in front of a window that's going to allow the light to pass through it so you can get like a really nice effect so this is just an easier way to take the photos if you need to use natural light so unfortunately I didn't actually get to take any micro photos of those final ice blocks because the battery in my m50 died and I actually don't have a spare one because this is my secondary camera which I don't use that often and I've actually been taking photos for quite a long time because it's quite time consuming to be bringing like every ice block here, setting it down and then like taking like 50 photos like all from different angles. I actually found it quite fun because like wherever you put the camera you're gonna get like a different shot with a different effect. So it's just a really fun activity to just like experiment with. So I definitely recommend that if you have time now that you try it at home. It's really fun, it's really simple, it's very easy to set up. 
you don't actually have to use a soft box like I did with a flash. You can literally just use the window method or just place your ice blocks in a welded area. So I actually really enjoyed this activity today because it's something different that I usually don't get to do. And I quite just enjoy like being able to take my time with something and really experiment and move things about and try different angles. So when I'm working outdoors photographing people, I find that it can be a little bit hectic because you do have to think really hard, you have to make fast decisions because you have like people walking around you, there'll be people in the background, you need to instruct the model, there's just so much that you have to think about. So this is, was just so relaxing for me to be able to have like one subject that doesn't move. Anyway guys, I hope that you liked this video and that you found it useful and entertaining. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and also let us know what you thought of the ice photos. Did you like them? Did you not? Or would you have put something else in the ice? If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and if you loved it, subscribe to our channel for more. Also, don't forget to check out our Instagram and Facebook where you can see more of our work and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye!